I'm having a great chat with uh, Nan Washburn, music director and conductor of the Michigan Philharmonic in Plymouth, Michigan, which is kind of a, a far suburb of Detroit. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. Kind of n- north, far northwestern suburb of the greater Detroit uh, area. And uh, Nan is celebrating her 20th season with that orchestra. Uh, and I have to just say to you, as I've said before, you have taken a community amateur orchestra. Must have been hell, but you took, <laughs> in terms of resistance and you know all that stuff, but you took this little community orchestra and you have created a professional symphony orchestra in, in Michigan Philharmonic. It's a stunning achievement. Uh, I am I'm so proud to know you and happy to know you and okay. thrilled to talk to you. We are going to talk about your 20th season that it begins on October 5th, a couple, three, four days from now, with a concert that's called Happy Nanniversary. Uh, how clever can that be? Happy Nanniversary. Um, and uh, what I have up on the performingartsreview.net uh, site is a, a video of the, the whole Shebang, the whole concert that you conducted and performed with Michigan Philharmonic, the Tchaikovsky Spectacular from last April. And I promise, I swear, I cross my heart and hope to uh, live longer, uh, that I will put up a couple paragraphs of, of, of review. But what I saw with that video from last April, and by the way, as we talked, how lucky can you be to have someone on your board that can create videos of such expert quality? Absolutely. We are so wow. fortunate. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about in my little review of that performance, and of course it's going to hold, hold true here in our conversation today about the 20th, your 20th season with the orchestra, is uh, the quality of the music making. It doesn't, it doesn't just happen. It's no. A, <laughs> this is, and by the way, Michigan Philharmonic is a professional symphony orchestra, uh, and it and it shows. And you have t- you have taken this orchestra light years. Uh, from where it was 20 years ago, uh, the recording, uh, the the video that people are going to have a look at from last April's uh, Tchaikovsky Spectacular is beautiful. Thank you. And more than more than that, as you know uh, from my modest careers <laughs> as a conductor, you are quite a conductor, and I, I mean that because a person can tell immediately. I think, at least I can, uh, and you really are superb conductor. There's no question about what you're doing, why you're doing it, what you're indicating, what's going on. You're very careful in preparation of the orchestra. You're very, I don't mean careful as in conservative, I mean you know what you're doing, and I'm extremely impressed by that. So uh, so anyway, let's get back to the 20th, your 20th season with uh, with uh, uh, Michigan Philharmonic. By the way, what's the, what, what is the year of the orchestra? How many years has it been around? This is our 73rd season. So we're just uh, shy a couple of years for another anniversary, the 75th. Wow. And Plymouth, as, as we mentioned, is a, is a sort of far distant suburb. I, I love putting it that way because it took me a little while to find it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Out there on the, on the far edges, you know, practically falling off the earth if, if Detroit were a flat planet. Uh, but here's what Mark Stryker uh, said of the Detroit Free Press. Quote, the orchestra has parlayed its innovative profile into its own niche. And how true that is, as you will see from this program uh, for the t- your 20th season. I had a look at it, and we're going to talk about it. Blown away. I mean, blown away. So let's get, let's get going. And, and you, have, you have a commitment that impresses me greatly. You have a commitment, commitment to new music. You have a commitment to bringing composers, new composers, interesting, fascinating composers to the community, to be there in the presence of their community, to ha- have their music performed. So uh, it, it may not show, I don't know if people come up to you in the streets in Greater Plymouth, uh, but you have transformed, even though they may not know it, I think they do, uh, that community. It has become... I think it, it's, it's changed quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I think at first, People were a little bit reluctant to do new music, and now they can't wait to meet the composers we bring in. See, that's magic. Uh, that's being a an artistic and music uh, director and conductor. That's your job. Uh, kudos and congratulations for moving us, as in society, certainly in your neck of the woods, forward 
It's, it's very, very crucial. So uh, here we go, 2018-2019 season. We talked about the, the opening concert October 5th. Happy anniversary! I love that, uh, and it's just this continuing tradition uh, that the that has owned, earned your orchestra and yourself this unique niche, as the Detroit Free Press refers to it. Um, uh, you know, your your guest guest composer. Tell me a little bit about this fellow, Wael Binali. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. It's the Wael Binali, and he actually is uh, from the L.A. area. He lives in West hmm. Hollywood. He also has, I think oh. he has an apartment in uh, London. He was born in London. Um, his parents are, one is from Qatar and one uh, is Lebanese. And so he writes in a, a really eclectic uh, mm. way, but he also studied film scoring in LA. So he wow. has a very large scale uh, vision for the orchestra, lots of color, lots of rhythm. Um, he's a really interesting guy. We we did some of his music on an Arab fusion concert a few years ago, and we're very excited to be doing his piece called Earth. And it's basically uh, his. It was written for um, a climate change conference in Qatar uh, in 2012. But it's actually a more complicated title than that, isn't it? Earth, plunder, wound, renewal, hope. Wow. Yeah. So basically, it's looking at uh, the situation we're in environmentally and the plunder of what we've done to the earth, you know, and then all of the ending with hope that we're going to get it together and, and fix our situation. Luckily, you're inland. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm looking at the, you know, I lived in Seattle for many years and it's still in the high 70s. You know, at the beginning of October in Seattle, no, not right, not correct, something's wrong. Uh, anyway, that's a, that's a, going to be a wonderful piece. And, and as you just described, your audience is ready. They're ready. For They're the absolutely ready. But I mean, when there is really a celebration of the orchestra. That, that's how I wanted to approach it, that it wasn't just about my anniversary. It really was, look what we've built and look how great the musicians are. That must be why you programmed uh, Hindemith's Metamorphosen on themes by Carl Maria von Weber, uh, you yeah. know, because you played for me once a million yes, thousand years right. ago, and I was in charge of the San Luis Obispo Symphony briefly for that, <laughs> for that time. It's tough. It's a very tough piece, but it's so exciting because, I mean, I really think it's sort of a concerto for orchestra. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody is busy. I mean, I was looking at it today. Again, there's like the second trumpet has something. The second trombone has something. And uh, it's really wonderful, and it's, you know, as you know, it was written by, um, you know, a German composer, but he was living in the U.S., and he wrote it for the brilliance and virtuosity that he was hearing in the uh, American orchestras. And I remember the, very well, it, it's a concerto, all right, especially for percussion. You know that yeah. section. Yes. That's tricky. Yeah. <laughs> Me meter and everything. That's tricky. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's a, it's a big, huge, glorious piece that's going to end the concert on October 5th. And then oh, just, a, just a silly little piece by Samuel Barber, the Violin <laughs> Concerto, which is one of my favorites of all time. And oh, you have too. your mine solo. Too. And, yeah, what a gorgeous concerto. I'm so glad that the public is finally starting to really recognize what a great masterpiece the Barber Violin Concerto is. It's just a fabulous piece. And we have a wonderful, wonderful soloist, uh, Danielle Bellan who's also from Southern California, but really? he's on the faculty, um, associate professor of violin at the University of Michigan now. But she's a former Sphinx competition winner and um, just a phenomenal soloist. See, every, I, everybody's moving inland. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to hear her play it this last week um, with piano and oh my God, it was so wow. wonderful. And then you open with uh, Berlioz Roman Carnival Overture. So I mean, what, have I left out anything? I think that's it, isn't it? I, 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 that's it. I mean, yeah. you can't... You, you can't know, go much further. Than two tambourines, you know. That's, but, <laughs> Ro yeah, Roman Carnival Overture. I mean, you're going to you're gonna take that Plymouth audience. By the way, you, you have huge houses at your concerts. I've seen the videos. So you, you are very popular in <laughs> well, Plymouth, Michigan. Uh, but you're going to get them all fired up with Roman Carnival Overture. <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> and then the Barber, gorgeous violin concerto, uh, uh, and, and so on, Metamorphosen, the, the Hindemith piece, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, tell me, can you describe for me the, the arc, I'm talking about the arc, kind of, we talked about this a few times, but, but kind of the arc of this programming, how a conductor chooses, let's just talk about that concert, let alone the arc of the season, but 
Uh, how'd that come together? How'd you make those choices? Is it you, you don't just throw darts at the wall, right? No, I mean, I really had the idea of the barber and uh, Daniel Belen to be featured and the Hindemith, which I've been wanting to do for some time. And I thought those were two. Ever since you saw me mess it up. Okay, never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here once long ago, but I know that we're going to do it so much, so much better. Um, so, you know, as you know from programming, you, you have a two pieces, and then you, you have to figure out what really works. And then I wanted to have a real wonderful opening, exciting opener, yeah. and the Roman Carnival is great. And I've never done it, so it's brand new to me, and I'm realizing just how hard it is. I was going to say, that's a, another There's one a that's treacherous and, and also it's it's a real virtuoso piece for the orchestra it, it so is. congratulations because the first program you you know you're getting out the whip and chains here because <laughs> because <laughs> uh, wow practicing for weeks already and uh, we have our first rehearsal very soon and and we have four and that's it <laughs> and then and then get this uh, this is pro i think a tradition i think i've seen you in costume in previous years, but the next concert on October 27th, Philhar Monster Mash. Now what? Give me a break. That is so brilliant as a title for a Halloween themed every year concert. I presume it's the same every year. Philhar Monster Mash. Concert. Well, actually, we change up the title depending ah. on what's going on. And this is the first time we're going to have the Monster Mash on yep. and we narrated. And so we figured that would be a, a perfect uh, way to, to mess with the title a little bit. <laughs> That's great. But That's great. Music we, we've done uh, a few times before, and lots of John Williams' Jaws, and which is a wee swick, and, and uh, Pirates of the uh, uh, Caribbean, and, you know, all the kind of movie scores. But then we also have scary classics, like the Witch's Ride from Hansel and Gretel, the Humperdinck, and, you know, all those sorts of things. Then you got the Bach. And then, and then you have controversial stuff like uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, the yeah. thing from that, and you got Zombie Nation tunes from that, and then then something from Sweeney Todd. So I guess what I'm uh, trying to say is, uh, if, let's just look at this program for a moment. Uh, Twenty years, I think you know the pulse of your community, right? How to get them excited and worked up and thrilled and wanting to come back because they do come back. You you have really accomplished a great achievement in terms of audience development and everything else we're going to go there but anyway that's a beauty uh third in a winter garden the concert on yeah. november 30th um i i kind of i don't want to deal with them in, in great detail but but uh, just give me a little overview what i really want to know let me list the last concerts you know the last few concerts but in november 30th uh in a winter garden the holiday pops on december 13th uh two shows so that must be a really big hit yep. over the years. Uh, Sold out. <laughs> miniature masterpieces on January 20th uh, with composer Whitney George and violinist Joseph Deller. Uh, concerts in February, March, April. You have a full-on professional symphony orchestra season. Yes, yes. We have. have you added a concert or has it been about that number of concerts over for the well, past you know, years? Well, you know, I think it's added from the old days, but... Um, there have been times where our 70th anniversary we did one additional concert and then we and then there are times when we have a, a opportunity to do a special concert so we, it fluctuates a little bit but this has been our core for the uh, last few years oh good okay and also of course it depends a lot on funding yes obviously so how how uh, i i know it's always a struggle but uh, how do you feel kind of steady these days well it i don't <laughs> think you ever feel steady but <laughs> that was a loaded um, question <laughs> when we hear that we get our state arts council grant that's always a nice uh thing and yeah. you know certain donors that are give again and you know how that goes and various grants and but it's always very tricky and we've been very very fortunate to have some other opportunities we do a, a fair number of concerts in the summer that our yeah. uh contract uh basically they pay us to go to play and that worked out really well. We like that a lot. That's nice. But, yeah. And also, that's the envy of several other orchestras, I'm sure, in your neck of the woods, uh, possibly yeah. even, because uh, you have a, you, you pulled off a, a good one there. I think you, did, you, uh, you, you mentioned when I last spoke to you something about summer concerts in the national forests or something. Well, in the, me the metro parks in the oh, area. They're very well uh, productions that we've gotten up to about 7,000 people at, at uh, one concert. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's really fun. It's not always easy. Weather doesn't always cooperate, but we have a good time. 
And I don't suppose, uh, of course, I know you won't. You're not going to do this, even though you know me all these years. You're not going to tell me what you what costume you're going to wear, right? No, I will not, because that is a secret that is highly, highly. <laughs> and yeah. by the way, you're not alone, right? Have I got this wrong? Uh, members of the orchestra will also be oh, costume. Yes, yes. Uh, they're all in costume. Uh, we encourage the audience to come in costume, and right. uh, it's a great time. Uh, but it's it is a secret always um, of what I'm going to wear. But what's interesting about this year, and I think it's because of the anniversary, that um, they uh, the marketing committee decided to in downtown Plymouth they uh, host scarecrows. A lot of local businesses and organizations have scarecrows that promote their business, and uh, this is the first time I've ever been a scarecrow. And there I am. There's a little Texas tail and. And red tennis shoes, which is the mark of this season. I put it in my publicity photos. I've seen your photos. Yeah, that's hilarious. They are the hilarious. The little, uh, or they're also calling it the mannequin. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Mark and Kitty, <laughs> they're a fun bunch. You know, and the community jumps right in and understands that right away. I think I think uh, my sense of things are, and you know, it's it's uh, difficult. Women as conductors or composers and uh, all the rest of it. But I think your community loves you. They they seem to. <laughs> <laughs> I know I put you on the spot on that one, but I I think uh, I think your community has a great time having you as their sort of musical uh, wizard. If you if since we're still on the Halloween theme, well, try uh, to make it fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And with the Halloween concert and other concerts I've done, it's a hybrid. As you can see, I'm tr doing classical music, yeah. but then I'm also doing props. I also audience participation. So it's a way, It's uh, we're also doing it at 7 o'clock, so kids can come, yeah. and that's the idea, build Very the important. audience yeah. uh, and appreciation for the music. And, and uh, we've talked about the orchestra when, and when you came on board, and was it 1999? I'm trying to come yeah. back 20 years. Um, as, an, as an amateur community orchestra, yeah, am I being fair? Yeah. Oh, that's fair. And, and, and the bit about that, that's, that uh, process of gently moving an orchestra into a professional uh, status, ah, yeah, just very briefly. But let's just talk about how how that how that go. How, how there is no resistance any longer, right? They're now your community is proud to have a professional orchestra. Very very happy about it. But it, it it's certainly a process, and it has to be done with care and gentleness. Um, but the first thing is that I ask people to practice, and there were actually some people that quit. So, well, that was that. I mean, I just asked him to practice. And that was, okay. But um, I, one of the things I think that um, changed, and it, I did it gradually over three years, um, they had been rehearsing once a week. And I started add, uh, adding extra rehearsals in the final week and slowly got it to where we're only rehearsing for our big concerts, four rehearsals in the week prior to the concert. Yeah. And that changes the the whole dynamic a lot. Absolutely. For those. And it and it becomes um, it is more of a professional thing, so that they can play other jobs as well. Other Absolutely. Orchestras. Absolutely. And you know, you not surprisingly, you have a huge outreach uh, system in place. Give us a little overview of how how you are working. I know that uh, you know the youth symphony performs with the orchestra on that April concert that's up that's on correct. video up up on your site. Uh, how, what 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 is the outreach you know, overview? Well, we have a, a youth orchestra that we started with seven kids in two thousand three. That was one Amazing. of my first things that I really wanted to get going. It's now one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty kids. I think. Wow, like a and junior have, orchestra and then a more advanced that kind of thing spread out yep. over. Ensembles, a flute choir, a wind ensemble, yeah. and three, uh, two levels of strings, and a full uh, orchestra, um, and that's really taken off, and we're very, very proud of that. And so, uh, but a part of the building process is featuring those students on concerts, so that we do side by sides not only with the youth symphony, youth orchestra, the top group, but also with Symphonia, which is our middle string group. They're going to be joining us in the November concert, uh, and that's just a string orchestra. Um, but we give those two ensembles that opportunity. And as you know, there is nothing more inspiring for a young kid than to sit next to a professional musician. Nothing, uh, nothing yeah. more, and nothing, uh, nothing more effective in getting in. in uh, how shall I say, persuading a young musician to practice harder, basically. <laughs> 
to become better at, at his or her instrument. Uh, and, and let's just do a few credits. I'm impressed. 19 ASCAP awards, and ASCAP, for those who are not aware, is the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. 19 ASCAP awards. The American Prize for Orchestral Conducting, uh, awards for Adventurous Program, and I want to and I want to ask you to give me an overview of that in just a second. Uh, you know, you've appeared in uh, NPR and magazines and Westways and Symphony magazines. Uh, what I'm getting at is, you know, what you're doing. Also, you are you are engaged. You are you're a PR conscious and savvy person. It's, it's part of your duty, really. It is. It has become a, a lot of one's duty. Not only uh, the concept of marketing when you're programming, but also where potential fund uh, funds could come from as well. You really have to be thinking about all of those organizational Absolutely. things. Now, let me just because uh, we mentioned the uh, composer whose name I can't pronounce just now for the for the uh, October fifth concert. Get, let's spend a few minutes. Tell me about all the other composers that you are bringing to Plymouth on this uh, season. Well, the one I'm, I'm very, very excited about is Libby Larson. She's a dear friend of mine. She's actually Huge. been to two or three times. But this particular piece, In a Winter Garden, is one I've wanted to do for, uh, I, I think, twenty, probably more than 30 years. I don't know, a long time. And I have finally gotten, I'm so glad, finally got three choirs that are going to join forces to sing it. It's a difficult piece, but it's just an extraordinary piece. Um, small orchestra, uh, but with two um, major soloists that really have a, uh, it's almost like a mini opera um, with uh, a nun who is in a convent that is uh, distressed, not only about the snow, see here, this is where I can relate, <laughs> but about <laughs> the possible end of the world and world problems and she's having trouble getting in the Christmas spirit, to put it bluntly. And then you have the uh, convent gardener, Thomas, who's just so, so over the top, excited about Christmas and everything that's coming. And it's their little dialogue with the choir kind of acting as a Greek chorus. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And, and I'm so thrilled that we're gonna finally be able to do it. And I, Libby, I, just ecstatic. Well, I love her music. By the way, I'm trying to think. I, I, hope, I hope I don't get the title wrong, but I, I'm remembering something about a piece I think was called Water Music by Libby Larson. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was one of her early orchestral pieces. And that work, I, I don't know, I taught it to some kids or something. I can't remember. It's been years ago. But that piece really grabbed my attention because it was so evocative. Her colors, her imagery, it just really, you know, my, my head anyway went right into kind of a pond and Yep. calm place in the evening or something, you know. But uh, And I, I think as good as that is, I think her choral and vocal music is where she is most known. And so it's just um, it's just beautiful, beautiful writing. And it's just such a universal s story of we all have to see past uh, the, the difficulties and we still have to celebrate life. We still have to celebrate uh, things that make us happy. And so it's, it's a good universal story for everyone mm. <clears throat> and by the way what an honor Libby Larson she's big yeah. she's big she is how, how about other composers uh, are we missing anybody uh, a couple we, more yes a young composer uh, uh, Whitney George who again is from California originally Maga, uh, went to school at Cal Arts she's now uh, that's my alma mater as you know all right uh, she's getting her doctorate um, in New York, um, teaches at, uh, I think, Brooklyn Conservatory of Music, and uh, just a very interesting composer, and she's done a setting of Edgar Allan uh, Poe's uh, The Raven, uh, narrated, and she's rescoring it for the ensemble that we'll have, which is like a mini orchestra, and uh, she is a delight and very inventive. Um, she has a group called the Curiosity Cabinet. She also conducts as well, but we're going to put her to work as a narrator of her own piece. Ah, so wonderful. That'll be very exciting. And, and what do you say to uh, young women? You know, when, well, when, when, when you, when, what do you say to young women when they, if they are pursuing possibly the idea of becoming a conductor? Well, she's doing it, so I, there's nothing to tell her. I mean, she's, she has created her own opportunity. She's doing opera, she's doing, uh, but it's, a lot of it is brand new music. And she's staging it really inventively, doing all these collaboration with dance, and I, I'm learning from her, you know. <laughs> and let's remind everybody: Plymouth, Michigan, about ten thousand people. 
right? Something well, like well, that. The downtown, yeah. And then we also have Plymouth Township here in these here parts. Yeah, I was really, confused about that. It, it surrounds uh, and actually live in the township. So that's another 35, 40,000 people. So it's a little bit bigger. Than yeah. and, and it's connected, of course, with the greater Detroit area. I mean, it is kind of yes. a met, greater we metro area. But, you know, you have the charming little downtown. Yes, I've seen, seen the pictures. Uh, and now it's the scarecrow of me. Well, there you go. And, and uh, you know, you've had this monumental artistic triumph there. With you know bringing living composers to that community, they never would have dreamt of such a thing 20, <laughs> over 20 years ago. Uh, and most of your concerts, are, as we've discussed a little bit, are, are tremendously innovative programming. And as you know, you balance and you have spoken to it. You, you're balancing repertoire that people will recognize and understand and enjoy and be happy with. And then you're not to say sneaking anymore because they know no, what's coming. They yeah. know it's coming. They're they looking. want it. They're looking forward to it. So uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but there's something about um, something about uh, changing people's lives, changing people's consciousness, um, even uh, transforming the the, the artistic uh, consciousness of your region. It's a huge responsibility. How do you feel about it? Yeah. Well, now that you say that, <laughs> um, well, I just feel like. You know, all of us in this business that classical music or orchestral music or chamber music is something that not enough people really, really enjoy and understand. And they all, a lot of people don't think they like it because they've never heard it or they gave it a shot. So, just everything I do is trying to um, get people's attention, reformatting a li little bit differently, whether it's a ukulele concerto or a bagpipe concerto. And we've done it all. Um, and uh, it, it really can excite people on different levels. And, and so I, I try every angle I can think of. And uh, how, are you happy? Are I you am. happy there? Except Good. when winter comes. I <laughs> yeah, you got, you're going on and on about this. Is it really pretty rough in Michigan in winter? Well, yeah. <laughs> now, remember that I'm from uh, Ventura, California, <laughs> so it's, it's way colder here. But you're being facetious, of course, too. Uh, we're talking about happiness as an artistic, uh, creative, artistic person. You are, I hope, because you've done yes. wonders. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. I, want, I just wanted to make sure I didn't, I didn't want to have to slap you around and remind you how, how brilliant you are and what a wonderful niche, that's the word of the day, uh, yes. you, you are in. So All right. I think you're in good shape, and I, I love, uh, I, I really, I, again, I want to uh, let everybody know that, that uh, uh, I'm going to, Put your uh, put your. I have already put up the uh, concert from last April, the Tchaikovsky Spectacular. I love the idea that I can put up videos of these performances so that the public can really see and hear with their own ears and eyes uh, the wonders you've accomplished there. And Nan Washburn, I think we're about done. Let's uh, have I met, forgotten anything? Well, we had a couple other composers coming in, but that's oh please, right. <laughs> no, no, it's important that you bring mention all of them. Well, we have uh, David uh, Biedenbender, who's on the faculty at Michigan State, and he's written this fabulous trombone concerto for a, n a fellow oh, faculty member a and uh, trombone, uh, Ava Ordman. And then we have Rick Robinson, who's actually from Detroit, former um, Detroit Symphony bass player, who's written a, a wonderful piece called uh, a tribute to his hometown. Um, and uh, but it's Highland Park, Michigan, and it's it's just a very very extraordinary. He's somebody that's also very eclectic in his taste, whether it's hip hop, jazz, Latin music, um, you know, classical crossover. All of that is in this wonderful piece. And by the way, that's what I'm encountering. You know, I'm reviewing CDs from all over the world, and my, I am I was initially shocked, and now I'm getting quite used to it. Which is that we are in a new uh, era of brilliant young musicians and artists and they are all they they are uh, Gunther Schuller's remark about that this third path this third way right. the mix of, of everything jazz classical right. all of that uh, and, and what I see over and over and over again are, are serious major classically trained musicians who are dipping into improvisation kind of like Mozart used to do yep. you know? yep. it's like we're read we're rediscovering yeah Okay, let's run it by. Why don't you do that? Let you run by just very quickly the dates and the and, and the season and of those seven it's seven concerts, right? Uh, I, think. I think it's seven. The spot. <laughs> oh, have I got you on this? Put you on the spot. Uh, sorry. So we've got October fifth, 
and that's our nan the anniversary, and then um, the uh, Philhar Monster Mash on on the October twenty seventh, and uh, in a Winter Garden on November thirtieth, and uh, the Holiday Pops with the Phil on at December thirteenth. Yep. And then I have to remember the December but something in March. Oh, uh, January. That's right. Yeah. Uh, miniature masterpieces is Jan uh, J January twenty seventh. Something, something like, like that. that. It moves around year to year, so uh, March, uh, February 16th, I think it is, yeah. um, for Swing. And By the way, what's that all about? Because uh, talk about it, about really it, making sure your audience loves every minute of Michigan Philharmonic. Well, February, again, is the coldest, snowiest month here, and we do this really fun Pops concert sort of hovering around uh, Valentine's Day and... Uh, this is all about the swing era and big band music and should be a delight. And then we have our, um, I think it's March 10th, um, we're calling it uh, Franck, Fireflies, and Fortissimos. Well, and uh, Franck Symphony in D minor, but David's trombone concerto, is, uh, their eyes are fireflies. It's all about his little kids' excitement about everything and what their eyes are like. <laughs> Uh, and we're doing a little Mozart on that concert, and then that's um, Hoffner, the number thirty-five. Uh, yes. Boy, do and I it, remember that also from my youth. It looks easy. Mm -mm. No. Not. <laughs> <laughs> and then we wrap it all up with Phil Palooza Two is the name of the last concert, and that will be um, April sixth. So that will be. What's, what's going? What's going on? Can I pitch it? Put you on the spot about the program? Sure. Right we're going to have our, our youth orchestra playing Brahms Academic Festival Orchestra with us. We have Rick Robinson's uh, uh, City of Trees. We have John Alden Carpenter's Skyscrapers mm -hmm. uh, Ballet, a jazz ballet from 1924, American composer. Um, we have uh, Zach Sheeman, who's a fabulous, fabulous uh, saxophonist, um, coming uh, to play the Escapades by. Um, John Williams from Catch Me If You Can. You know what? I, that's uh, that just took me totally by surprise. I'm sure I read it when I was preparing, but I don't think oh. I've ever heard this piece. Oh, you have to! Oh, it's so jazzy, it's so wonderful and virtuosic for the saxophonist. And then we have invited the Plymouth Community Band to join us for the last two pieces to blow out the whole uh, roof uh, on where we're, we will be, and that will be for Candide Overture by Bernstein. Um, and the uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, march to bring out the season. You know what? It's uh, something about inclusivity, bringing in your community from time to time for very special events. Candide, I love that overture. Also, you know, not exactly easy, technically speaking, you know, no. from the point of view of the musicians. Very, very, very tricky, very tough. Uh, but, uh, you know, bringing the community band in, and then there's the youth symphony, and all of this. Uh, however you and your board sit down and cook these things up. I don't know what's in your Kool-Aid, but it, it always, uh, it, these are, this is exactly the way to make an orchestra that people have somehow gotten the idea is remote and elite, uh, really engaging in their community. So I, I salute you once more. It's brilliant. You. And you are a model, I think, uh, really a model for the country. Well, thank okay. you so much. I mean, the and we try to have fun. You know, that's really the that's point. That's probably most of the uh, most of the reason that you're so successful. I mean, having music is not, uh, not you know it's not meant to be funeral. Um, so so there you go. An orchestra has uh, you parlayed it, parlayed its innovative profile into its own niche. As I, I want to use that one again. It's such a brilliant quote from Detroit Free Press. You know, we're talking a major city is looking over at you and saying, "Oh, something's going on over there in Plymouth." Uh, Wonderful season, your twentieth season as conductor. What do you think? How uh, are you going to be able to stand the winters for another twenty years? <laughs> well, maybe not another twenty, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be here for a while. Good. We've got a lot of good plans and lots of things coming up. Good. So. Good, because I'm sure your community appreciates you, and, and I know that the country is aware of you. Uh, of you and your workings and your orchestra. So I think it's just win-win situation. It's always a treat talking with you. Nan Washburn, music director and conductor of the Michigan Philharmonic, which she has developed to, into really a first-rate professional symphony orchestra. Thanks for giving me some time. Uh, it isn't wintry yet, is it? No, no. It's oh, good. <laughs> okay. We're enjoying it. <laughs> okay. Thanks for giving me Thank some you. time once again. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks. Bye-bye.